You probably thought the time would never come where we've reached the last video for the entire course. So I'm sure you have like a big tub of ice cream and a box of Kleenex to drown your sorrows as you watch this last video on electrochemistry. Here's the last equation in the packet. And this is like a sad day. Maybe it's a happy day. Uh, I'm like full of mixed emotions, really. Okay, so here's this last equation. I, it's kind of a funky one. And really, you might use this once, if even that, on the entire AP test. Uh, it's not something that I would lose sleep over because all of this information is given in the packet. So for you, it should be a matter of plug and chug. As long as you know that this little equation can be used to calculate current, which is a measure of the rate at which charge flows through a system. We can use this to do some kinds of stoichiometry calculations. So it says here that uh, we can calculate how much chemical change occurs with the flow of a given current for a specified amount of time. That's kind of the variables used in this equation. So I is current. It's often measured in amps. Now this they don't tell you that an amp is really just a coulomb per second. So and if you just used coulombs per second, that's totally acceptable. It's totally fine. Because then the Q is your charge in units of coulombs and T is your time in seconds. That they will tell you in the packet. So you don't have to worry so much about like the amp thing, because if you did solve for I current and you left it in units of coulombs per second, A plus, totally fine. If you forget that Q is charge and T is time in seconds, they'll tell you that in the packet. Now there's different ways that you could use this. I mean, sometimes it is just kind of a plug and chug. What's the current? Or maybe here's the current, here's the coulombs. What's the time that it takes for this system to run or something like that? I have also seen this kind of a fun little equation. A current of 10 amps, which again is just a coulomb per second, is passed through a solution containing metal plus two ions some kind of an unknown metal and its charge is plus two or two plus for 30 minutes it produces 5.94 grams of solid metal whatever this unknown metal is we want to determine its identity excellent uh, the way we will do that is by solving for its molar mass which is grams per mole Faraday's constant is given. It says that we can use 96,000 coulombs per mole of electrons, but it's actually a little different in your AP packet. So why don't we use that number just to get used to it? The packet's going to say 96,485 coulombs per mole of electrons. Let's use that. Okay, so it's like, where the heck do you start, right? Well, I mean, you start with what you have. We can use this guy right away. Uh, we can use this I current equals Q charge per time. And we'll just kind of plug and chug. We'll see what we have. We have the current 10 amps. Uh, what else do we have? We have the time 30 minutes. But this equation is in units of second for time. So if we have minutes, uh, there should be 60 seconds in a minute. We're going to plug this in as uh, 1,800 seconds. We do not know Q, the charge or the coulombs. But I knew the other ones. I knew the current. I knew the time. So if we plug this in, we could solve for Q, which would be, oh, that's easy, uh, maybe just like 18,000. Thousand. And now here again, like when they say amp, the unit is really like coulombs per second. 
So I've got coulombs per second cross multiplying times seconds. My unit is really coulombs. Or again, they'll tell you that in the AP packet. Q is charged in coulombs. Okay, so what the heck are we going to do with that? We're going to use that with Faraday's constant. So here's the second part of this. 18,000 coulombs. I could use this with Faraday's constant. It's 96,485 coulombs per one mole of electrons transferred. Well, if I look at this guy, and this is really like metal 2 plus or plus 2, that's the charge. Well, we're going to transfer 2 moles of electrons, right? If I'm going from this 2 plus, plus 2 metal to the neutral, we're going to gain 2 moles of electrons. Let's do some stoichiometry. There will be two moles of electrons transferred for every one mole of metal. I like this is my unknown metal M. Every one mole of metal M formed gains two moles of electrons from the ion. So stoichiometry, I mean, if you think about it as just setting up proportions and canceling units, which I'm kind of psycho about canceling these units, let's say we plug this in our calculator, I suppose we could leave maybe two sig figs, that's not crazy. I get about 0 0.093, and look at the unit that's left, moles. Moles of metal M. Okay, we can use that then to calculate the molar mass. Molar mass is a good way of identifying an unknown. So we'll just kind of do a little plug and chug now. Uh, with this equation. Molar mass. They told us how many grams of metal were formed. 5.94 grams. And now we know that's for 0 0.093 moles of metal. So if I plug that in my calculator, and I don't know, I mean, if I go two sig figs, I guess I'm looking at about 64 grams per mole, something like that. And now we can just go to the periodic table and see who's closest. I guess it's maybe like copper. Copper is like 63.55. Yeah, it's probably going to be copper. Copper. Copper's closest. Now, again, this is maybe like the most intricate problem that I've seen, the kind of problem that I've seen that uses this equation, this little booger in the middle here. So I wanted to at least expose you to this. Again, they could just have something very basic that is just a plug and chug. Maybe this is your final answer. They just say, hey, uh, like how many coulombs are running through the system? What's the charge? Or I've seen one that'll say, like, what's the current? Or some that just say, like, how much time will it take for this amount of charge to flow through the system or whatever? So it really could be a very basic plug and chug kind of situation. Or it could be something a little crazier, maybe like this one. So if this all makes sense, again, you're in a very good place. This is the most intricate problem that I've seen that uses this last equation. So with that, you can't see, but I am wiping tears as they fall down my cheek. This was your last video for the year. Uh, I hope that you found these helpful. They're still up. I'll leave them up all year. So as you're studying for the AP test, if there's any topic that you really, really need a good refresher on, feel free to go back and watch these old videos. That uh, could be kind of fun, a little blast from the past. Uh, but I think to like, give yourself a little pat on the back right now because this is not 
and easy course. It's time consuming, but anything worthwhile does not come easy. So I know you've put in a lot of time and effort throughout the year, and I really do hope that it pays off. Like I'm on your side here when it comes to the AP test. I really hope that you feel well prepared that you can go in and absolutely crush this thing uh, coming up in a few weeks. Uh, so I am very proud of you. I know you've worked hard, and I hope that it does pay off. So with that, I'm signing off.